get a lot of these things. YouTube's right, big waste of time. Well, I clicked on it and I received the shock of my life. Um, I proceeded to watch a video of Keynes and Hayek involved in a rap um, on the business cycle theory in which uh, Hayek clearly won the debate. And um, <laughs> it took a while for me to process what I had just seen. I was sort of fell on the floor, the jaw dropped up. We've all been through this when we saw this. We couldn't believe it was, it was happening. Um, you know, it occurred to me immediately that this is the greatest piece of, of educational uh, material probably in the history of the Austrian school, you know, over 500 years. <laughs> but, but not only that, it does, the video does more than that, to my mind. It, it also educates about economics in general. It makes economics very interesting, very exciting. I'm sure it's going to be recruiting people into economics programs all over the country now. They're going to be showing up to their departments expecting to learn about uh, things like structure production and Hayek and, the, and uh, yeah, all these things, and they're going to find out otherwise. Um, but it's, it's not only an important piece of ed educational tool for, for the average person. We have many students who have given the video to their professors who found out that there's a person named Hayek for the first time, you know, ever. <laughs> Uh, so uh, that's been very important. Um, on Mises Institute forums, uh, by the way, the, the video itself has become legendary in the meantime. Uh, things like, um, prepare to get school to my Austrian perspective, you know, on people's signatures. Over the next few weeks after January 23rd, I must have uh, had a thousand copies sent to me. Have you seen this three weeks later? Are you, are you kidding? Of course I've seen this thing. This is the most legendary thing. I wrote Ross, Russ Roberts, whose name is on, on the video in addition to the gentleman we have here tonight. And he, he, he said, well, you're very gracious for saying how much you like the video, but I must tell you that it's John Papala, who is the real genius behind the thing. Um, he's the one who really understands the business cycle, better uh, business cycle theory better than I do. And he's also the, the genius behind producing the video. So um, in some ways for me, this, this moment of the conference rep represents uh, two dreams that I never thought I would see fulfilled. One was watching such a rap video. The second thing is having, having John Papala here with us at the conference. It was hastily arranged. He was very gracious to come here. And I won't use any more time. I'll just introduce the man who is a superstar to all of us, John Papala. <laughs> Okay, um, I haven't done anything like, like this very much, so to get introduced like that really makes it that much easier. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> it's like at first, uh, you know, Caroline, Caroline gives her amazing speech, and she's an eloquent speaker and has such a grasp of, of her knowledge, and now, now this, so excuse me. <laughs> um, hopefully the acoustics are good because the lyrics, if you haven't seen it, are dense, and if you have, they're still dense. Um, so, what I've put together is, as best I can, in as hopefully a good amount of time, a, a, sort of a narrative of how this came about, how I came to even know about these things. I didn't take economics. Um, I didn't know about these ideas even three years ago. So how I went from that to having, you know, be standing here today. Um, and that's, that's what you're about to see. So, without further ado, let me... Lower the lights, hopefully not blow out your eardrums, and present fear, the boom, and bust. Name is... Hayek. F.A. Hayek. Good name. Party at the Fed. Harvard. 20 minutes. Lobby. John Maynard Keynes. Oh. F.A. Hayek. Yeah. yeah, we're opposed. We oppose each other philosophically. In the same studio. We've been going back and forth for a century. I want to steer markets. I want them set free. There's a boom and bust cycle and good reason to fear it. Play more interest no. rates. It's the animal spirits. John Maynard Keynes wrote the book on modern macro. The man you need when the economy's off track. Whoa. 
depression, recession, now your question's in session. Have a seat and I'll school you in one simple lesson. Boom, 1929, the big crash. We didn't bounce back, economies in the trash. Persistent unemployment, the result of sticky wages. Waiting for recovery, Seriously? that's outrageous. I had a real plan, any fool can understand. The advice real simple, boost aggregate demand. C, I, G, all together gets to Y. Keep that total growing, watch the economy fly. We've been going back and forth for a century. I want to steer markets. I want them set free. There's a boom and bust cycle and good reason to fear it. Play low well interest no, rates. It's the animal spirit. You see, it's all about spending. Hear the register cha-ching. Circular flow, the dough is everything. So if that flow is getting low, doesn't matter the reason. We need more government spending. Now it's stimulus season. So forget about saving. Get it straight out of your head. Like I said, in the long run, we're all dead. Savings is destruction, that's the paradox of thrift. Don't keep money in your pocket or that growth will never lift because business is driven by the animal spirits. The bull and the bear and there's reasons to fear its effects on capital investment, income and growth. That's why the state should fill the gap with stimulus, both the monetary and the fiscal. They're equally correct. Public works, digging ditches, war has the same effect. Even a broken window helps the glass man have some wealth, the multiplier driving higher the economy's health. And if the central bank's interest Great policy tanks, a liquidity trap, that new money stuck in the banks. Deficits could be the cure you've been looking for. Let the spending soar, now that you know the score. My general theories made quite an impression. Revolution! I transformed the econ profession. You know me, modesty, still I'm taking a bow. So say it loud and say it proud, we're all Keynesians now. We've been going back and forth for a century. I want to steer markets. I want them set free. There's a boom and bust cycle and good reason to fear it. I made my case. Freddie H, listen up, can you hear it? I'll begin in broad strokes, just like my friend Keynes. His theory conceals the mechanics to change. That simple equation, too much aggregation, ignores human action and motivation. Yet it continues as a justification for bailouts, payoffs, by polls with machinations. You provide them with cover to sell us a free lunch. Then all that we're left with is debt and a bunch. If you're living high on that cheap credit hog, don't look for a cure from the hair of the dog. Real savings come first if you want to invest The market coordinates time with interest Your focus on spending is pushing on thread In the long run, my friend, it's your theory that's dead So sorry there, buddy, if that sounds like invective Prepare to get schooled in my Austrian perspective We've been going back and forth for a century I want to steer markets I want them set free There's a boom and bust cycle and good reason to fear it Play low interest no, rates it's the animal spirit The place you should study isn't the bust It's the boom that should make you feel leery That's the thrust of my theory The capital structure is key Malinvestments wreck the economy The boom gets started with an expansion of credit The Fed sets rates low Are you starting to get it? That new money is confused for real loanable funds But it's just inflation that's driving the ones Who invest in new projects like housing construction The boom plants the seeds for its future destruction the aren't real, consumption's up too, and the grasping for resources reveals there's too few. So the boom turns to bust as the interest rates rise, for the cost of production price signals relies. The boom was a binge, that's a matter of fact, now it's devalued capital that makes up the slack. Whether it's the late 20s or 2005, booming bad investments seems like they'd thrive. You must save to don't use the printing press, or a bus will surely follow, an economy depressed. Your so-called stimulus will make things worse. Just more of the same, more incentives perverse. And that credit crunch ain't a liquidity trap, just a broke banking system. I'm done, that's a wrap. We've been going back and forth for a century. I want to steer markets. I want them set free. There's a boom and bust cycle and good reason to fear it. Play low well interest no, rates. it's the animal spirit. The ideas of economists and political philosophers, both when they are right and when they are wrong, are more powerful than is commonly understood. Indeed, the world is ruled by little else. Practical men who believe themselves to be quite exempt from any intellectual influence are usually the slaves of some defunct economist. The curious task of economics is to demonstrate to men how little they really know about what they imagine they can design.
that, that's the first time I think it took longer to set up watching the video than watching the video. <laughs> so, uh, well, thank you for that warm reception. I can't say I didn't expect it. <laughs> <laughs> but you are a good crowd for this video. You are the crowd. So I've already talked about all these great things I was reading that allowed me to do this as a non-economist, which apparently is an advantage if you want to make something that communicates economic ideas, perhaps. <laughs> it's a dig. Um, you know, talked about uh, this, this good man right here, this bad stuff right here, and really underneath it all, I think what we're all worried about is that, right? You know, I mean, I think that there's a sense in which uh, there's an intellectual game to be played here, and it's a lot of fun because these are ideas and you know, if you're here, you're an intellectual if you're in this room. And so there's a, there's a lot of fun in that, but it does matter. And that's why I spent uh, then my nights and weekends for the past year doing this. And uh, not even for the profit motive, which sometimes you need more than that. So I want to talk to you about the creative process a little bit, um, which is something probably you're a little less familiar with. You know, the first thing that we did was we had to pick the musical style. And... Uh, this was interesting because our first idea, and you know, I'm, I'm talking a lot about the Austrian side and about my contribution, but you know, Russ Roberts was absolutely a partner. And perhaps the most interesting thing about this project was that you know, I contributed more economics than Russ insofar as I, under, I understood how to tell the Hayek story, whether I understand it or not, we'll see. Um, and, uh, and Russ had a lot of great visual ideas and he's a great storyteller in his own right. So the first idea we had was not a rap video. It was a, a, a sitcom, Canes in the City. <laughs> <laughs> and in this sitcom, John Maynard Keynes, again, this is like February 2009. So we, you know, we all know it was being passed right around then. He decided, he, you know, this video, with this um, mini sitcom would basically show Keynes living out his life and his, his ideology as a practical matter, which means, you know, getting laid off and just continuing your aggregate demand on the credit card. Um, we pretty quickly realized that we weren't going to necessarily be able to pull that off in the way I'd want to. So Russ said, why don't we do the, uh, just the opening theme song for what Canes in the City could be? And his idea, which was hilarious, was let's have it be staying alive, since that's what his ideas seem to do. So he wrote, he wrote lyrics for uh, um, Keynes is Staying Alive. Now, I shouldn't play this because it's embarrassing. But I'm going to give you just a preview of Keynes Staying Alive. I wasn't planning on this, but since we got so tripped up on that, I might as well embarrass myself a little more. <laughs> Let me, I'm going to dig, dig this out here. Let's see. I, uh, okay, roughs. Old. Okay, now this. I'm not going to play the whole thing because it's just as long. But this is me. <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. Stop it there. <laughs> I'll stop it there. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a treat just for this crowd. That does not actually, that doesn't exist. <laughs> not for real. <laughs> okay, maybe it exists for real just for that one minute, but after that, okay. I am being streamed live on the internet. Oh, great. Okay, anyway. Am I red? Am I really red? 
Okay. So, uh, being that I am, I'm a professional, I work at Spike TV, I produce and direct uh, commercials and campaigns for things like the uh, Video Game Awards and uh, Deadliest Warrior coming April 20th at 10. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I realized pretty quickly that the music rights, if we wanted this to be as big as we hoped it would be, would be a nightmare and not possible. So that put us back to the drawing board, and part of what that drawing board meant was really thinking hard about how it is that we're going to really do this enterprise of expanding awareness of what we want to say beyond the choir. Because that plays great to the choir. You guys love that. But nobody on the margin speak to another Austrian idea, is going to care about that. They're going to see that as just a criticism of Keynes and, okay, these guys are right-wingers that hate Keynes. So we said, let's, you know, what? I, the reason why I reached out to Russ was that I really thought he was a, a, a fair person, even though he's as libertarian as they come, shy of an anarchist. Um, so we said, let's do, let's do both. We're going to let Keynes have his say. We're going to be fair to his ideas. Then we're going to smash him. But at least he will have his hearing, and no one can claim that we just hacked it up and that this is a hack job. And that might give it just a chance of being used in a school, and maybe even by someone that's not an Austrian. And so that's what we did. And we went back to the drawing board. And again, Russ, making a creative contribution, said, jokingly said, let's do a rap song. And he was laughing. He, you know, he's not a rap guy. <laughs> and I said, no, that's great. You know, rap's really libertarian. You know, they're gun rights, you know, <laughs> legal drugs. It's a battle. It's everything we want. It's perfect. Lots of gold. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I mean, if, if anybody's on the gold standard, it's uh, rappers. So. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe from the... No, I think Master P has a gold-plated tank. So even though they don't, they, they don't wear it outwardly, but it's still a factor. They're still, maybe it's more, it's 100% reserves. Um, so, okay. So I'd never written a rap song before. I had no idea how to go about that. It's like a poem, so that was a place to start. And we had all these Keynes lyrics from uh, my screeching first version. So I, we began listening to songs uh, and trying to pick what kind of sound. And I, I reached out to a music production company, Blackboard 3 in New York, um, to help me you know, produce the music part, the instrumental. And, uh, and then one night after listening to Remember the Name about 150 times, just to get a sense, because it had that sort of classical element as an undertone. I wanted a sort of classical strings part, because it's, you know, it's the 1930s, back to life. Uh, I just sat down and started writing this poem, taking the lyrics, and man, the Hayek stuff came easy for some reason, because I'm a freak. Uh, it was a lot longer. There was references to, uh, you know, Jap Japan's public works were a lesson in fail. Your economic theories are stale, and boom of the late 40s and 50s was tops, despite large post-war government spending drops and stuff like that. I mean, it goes on and on. <laughs> And I'm, so, I'm, amazed, I'm amazed at how successful this video has been considering its length. These things don't usually go seven minutes and keep, it, keep anybody's attention. So, you know, we had our script. The next step was to cast performers. And the first thing I did was say, uh, you know, I, all along the way, the, my idea for this was it's got to just be a real thing. It's not a joke. These, these aren't joke ideas. It's not going to be a joke video. It's going to be a real song. We're going to produce it professionally with my team from Spike, that I use, this is not a spike endorsed project, but you know, on a personal level. Uh, so the first thing I did was um, have a couple Brooklyn and, and Bronx rappers, like up and coming people, I guess, I don't know, uh, come in and, and try this out. And I quickly realized these lyrics are not for these guys. <laughs> it's not that they couldn't do it, but I couldn't understand it. And I wrote it. So it's like with Russ. So, so I turned to, um, someone that always finds exactly what you need, no matter what, my wife. <laughs> and after one day, she turned up these guys, Billy and Adam. Now, notice his glasses. I mean, I was like, he's wearing Hayek's glasses. This is crazy. It's two guys. They're, they're white comedy rappers, and he's got Hayek's glasses. 
so that was sort of a little moment of providence, and uh, they turned out to be really great people and really great partners. And you know, they, you know, I said, listen, this is a project that you're going to have to invest some time in because you're going to need to actually understand this enough to know the inflections. Though I will provide you with guidance on that, but you need to, we need to be able to get it. You know, the capital structure is key. So, <laughs> so uh, and so these two guys became became these two guys. We rehearsed and revised and shortened, so Japan's malaise goes away. We stuck, uh, we, you know, left out the empirics, like a good Austrian. <laughs> I'm glad that went over. <laughs> and we recorded the track. Um, making motion pictures is a process akin to a, a construction site. It's really what it is. It's, uh, you know, you have to scout your locations. You have to secure the crew. Uh, it's all logistics. It's not flashy at all. It's me doing that. <laughs> it's me driving around a box truck in the snow to pick up and drop off gear. Some of the most important, which is bags of sand that you actually put on the light stands so that they don't fall over and kill somebody. Um, and a, a very large, relative to this project, crew came together on this. Uh, which was a, not a surprise, but in some ways was a surprise because this is a this is criticizing the mainstream. This is criticizing good old Obama and his stimulus plan. It's not the kind of thing that you'd expect to get a lot of support from the creative community, even if they're my friends. And I think perhaps my sort my outlook on how to approach these things is guided by how uh, how kind my friends are, even if some of them are socialists. <laughs> So the next step is to edit and animate the graphics, the color correct it, put it together, the post-production process. You got a unfortunate and unplanned preview of how that happens. And then we were done. I'm going to give you one other preview. Just, again, part of the, a little bit of a window into the process. And a preview of what Russ and I are hoping to be a, um, a contest that will be hosted on Econ Stories. And that is, it's, time, it's your turn to make the Hayek and Keynes rap. So here is the, an early green screen cut. We're opposed. We oppose each other philosophically in the same studio. We've been going back and forth for a century. I want to steer markets. I want them set free. There's a boom and bust cycle and good reason to fear it. Play low interest rates. Uh, it's the animal spirit. Shut so you can see sort of where that where that starts. That we are gonna we're gonna post that video online and basically put a call out to all of the creative people in the world to reimagine this project. And uh, the qualification will be it has to illuminate further. It cannot denigrate. But I'm sure we'll get plenty of that too. It's all right. Um, <laughs> and so I, I'm gonna just wrap this out. Um, maybe over my time with a little slideshow. So the little, the little still camera, this was filmed on a, a $1,600 still camera, the Canon 7D, which in and of itself is sort of a miracle. And a, a part of why that was done is because actually within that creative, within the sort of the creative community, it's an, it was a new gadget. So it was like anything that can generate buzz. I'm going to shoot on the latest camera and do it in this new way with this new camera that'll help, you know, maybe get people to spread the word. So you can see some of you know what went, went, went into it. There's my buddy Josh who edited the video. There's me uh, rigging lights, our cast. This was a 16 plus hour day. It started at 12 o'clock on the 20th and went to five or six o'clock in the morning on the 21st. On December 20th, New York City got hit with about two feet of snow. So you, know, you might have noticed that while Keynes and Hayek are waiting for their limo to arrive, there are Keynes and Hayek-sized mountains of snow. Um, one of the things I had to do in that snow was the day before, I was thinking about how are you going to, what am I going to do, how am I going to edit together the sequence when Hayek arrives in the hotel room? You know, the whole, idea, the, the whole purpose of that little open is just to sort of establish that here's Keynes and Hayek, we say their names, name to a face, people that don't know get it. And then 
Kane's going to invite him down for, he's already drinking, so he's got the party started already. So that's a little, all those little moments are in there. But what's Hayek going to do in his room? And I hadn't actually really thought it through. I was like, oh, he's going to maybe like look at things and be amazed that the phone is wireless or something. I don't know. And then we, we checked into the hotel and I was like, oh my God, the Bible. <laughs> well, if there's a Bible for ma mainstream economics, it's the general theory, whether they like it or not. So I didn't have a copy of the general theory. I actually had to drive through the snow the morning that we shot to the Barnes and Noble to buy a copy of the general theory. <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't need to buy prices in production. <laughs> Man, only this crowd can these jokes work. <laughs> so, uh, all this work, all this effort, this entire narrative, my entire life. Uh, I, I forgot to mention that, again, the only reason why music was done at all was because while I was coming home and spending all my time reading Mises.org and talking about the evils of the minimum wage and, <laughs> you know... The, all, all of this good stuff. My wife was like, this is the most boring thing. I can't believe this is what you're so excited about. <laughs> if you're going to do this, it has to be music because that's the only way people can get, get into something this boring. <laughs> so <laughs> even in the middle of like the collapse of the economy, it's still boring. So, uh, so my wife... My wife is also responsible, aside from finding the talent and helping to find the locations and being a co-producer on the project, it probably wouldn't have been music without her. And it probably wouldn't have been successful without music. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of its impact goes to my wife, Lisa. Uh, so as you've probably seen, yeah. So in, in, there's not a lot of mainstream news outlets that report on economics that are worth very much, but uh, although Bloomberg's great. I do like Bloomberg. Tom, Tom, Tom Keene on The Economy was actually one of the podcasts I was listening to, although he's obviously a Keynesian. Um, but NPR's Planet Money team is pretty amazing, and Russ had a relationship with them. So, uh, I mean, they had George Selgin on to talk about the alternative point of view on the FDIC. Like, who does that? Who does that with anybody that people actually know about, as far as like non-interested people, the mainstream? Um, and so we, you know, we got on the, the opening day, January 25th, we got on NPR's uh, All Things Considered on the radio, which has a very large viewership, and that really kicked us off. And I have to thank those guys a lot. But the interesting story, if you heard that segment, was that while Russ was there, um, playing the video for the team at Planet Money, uh, the pop star Kesha was in the building and they invited her over to listen to the track and watch it. And amazingly, she actually watched the whole thing and then said something to the effect of, uh, it's really good rapping. <laughs> Which, I mean, how, how much better could you get than that? It's a completely bizarre novel thing with rap and you've got this pop star talking about it. Uh, so we, it went live the next day which started to indicate the impact that this could possibly have. Somebody posted this picture below on their Twitter account. It's a picture of some st college student somewhere watching the video off, the, off of the website in their, in their presumably economics class. That's the second day. Somewhere. Who knows where it is? We live in Hayek's world. I think the next generation recognizes that, even if they don't understand the language of it. Command and control and central planning just play no part in this world. So, you know, as of right now, we've had over 1 million views worldwide, about 938 or 30, you know, 39,000 on the main video. It's been voluntarily translated into something like 12 languages. <laughs> not, not, not overdub, but actually even more, well, not more work per se, but... Um, you know, subtitled, we're talk Chinese. The French version has 40,000 views. <laughs> Maybe Sarkozy is just a start. Um, you know, it's also gotten broad mainstream support when you, Google the, when you Google it and bring up the articles. What you find is a lot of mainstream outlets pick this up. I'm sure it's at least 90% the novelty, but I think it's also the times and the tone. 
And of course, as that picture uh, explains, it's being used in schools. We got sent a lesson plan from a teacher in Hong Kong that has built a lesson around the video to teach intro, introductory macro. And so they watch it like three or four times over the course and slowly deconstruct like, okay, well, what's sticky wages? And you know, uh, reality, I, you know. <laughs> yes, people don't instantly change the way from it. So, you know, I've been talking about this, the philosophy. And I think this is an important. I, I'm new to this community that you guys have been participating in for a long time. I, uh, I don't know all the divisions. Um, I love all you guys, though, so it doesn't matter. I think Milton Friedman's great. He might be wrong on money, but he's great. So, um, so to me, I, I see, I see an, an opportunity to... to uh, bring a tone to this work and a philosophy to this work, and this is what I'm going to be about, hopefully for the rest of my life, of putting our ideas out there in a way that's broader, in a way that aims at the margin, the people that are undecided, the people that are interested and don't yet have their mind made up, and the rest of us can love it as well. And so, you know, these are sort of our principles you know, honest, confident criticism. Keynes is wrong for the most part, and we should be able to put him out there fully and let him reveal for himself that he thinks broken windows and digging ditches is good for the economy. I mean, it's ludicrous on his face. Anybody that's ever had a leak in their house knows that they, that's not good. It's like, oh, good, I get to replace my furnace. Man, I feel wealthy. <laughs> this is all happening while I got a leak in my house, and I'm like, oh, this is, I'm, I'm sure glad I'm stimulating the economy. You know, real production value is just part of what my uh, specialization. You know, the sound economics, hopefully, Roger can talk about that, but it seems like we've gotten it mostly right. Uh, you know, it's funny how far you get when you assume people are smart. You know, I think that that doesn't seem like a hard thing to do, but if you just assume they're pretty smart and you make something that you like, avoiding cheap shots for the most part. Sometimes they're deserved. We put a couple in there. And, and, and going with your gut, and I, I, just, I just got into this Austrian economics and the business cycle and monetary policy, and it's all a bunch of, it's completely bizarre for me to get into that, but I did, and I love it, and I'm just going to keep working on it. And we didn't make this video because we thought X, Y, and Z would like it. We made it because we love the ideas, and I think that's the only way you can do things is you have to actually target what you care about, what you love. And out of that will emerge all of the other things that made it unique and great. And you'd be amazed how many people on TV get that idea wrong. What would the kids like? Not what you're probably going to do. So, uh, okay. Lastly, the future. Like I said, this is, this is my endeavor. It is a vocation for me now. So we're going to do more. We're going to do more under the Econ Stories brand. I want to do more outside of that. Um, I'm a big fan of the broken window problem. So that could be the next one. We're working on it. And that's it, uh, I guess, questions. So. Well, I have to say that, that my reaction to that video was full of delight and, and shock. You know, like, how did this happen? Like, who is this person to do this? And, and my son showed it to me in his, in his room in Berkeley. And it's, I mean, at least a very small group of thousand people seeing it, and it's 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 that emotional element of like, oh my god, look at this, it's great. <laughs> it's weird. I forgot to say. So Roger's here, and um, you know, Jeff had a great idea to have Roger just sort of talk about what this, the contents of the video, and his point of view, and his um. You know, I was inspired by his visualization of Hayek and the five-stage capital structure is all is an ode to Roger. So, uh, I mean, what do you what do you think, Roger? Yeah, come on. Uh, I wrote up notes for this comment a couple of days ago, and then found this morning I rewrote them all together uh, while uh, John was talking. I rewrote them once again. In fact, the last thing I wrote is never follow John Popola to the podium. <laughs> uh, but I like it, my own comments, I want to talk about my own reaction to the video, uh, the response I've seen from other students and others, and the change in macro pedagogy. I think that's really the key here, that the video not only mirrors, it shows what's going on, 
but uh, it helps to facilitate uh, uh, as well. Now, I have to say that when I first saw the video, I just I wondered out loud, okay, uh, will a, a rap version of Keynes and Hayek uh, really increase the student's receptiveness to, to the Austrian theories? But uh, before I could even seriously doubt that it would, another thought occurred to me, and that the video, or the, the video certainly had increased my receptiveness to rap, rap music. <laughs> So that, that's my half of bridging the generation gap. <laughs> uh, I know for me, rap music uh, is something like opera in the sense that you have to already know the story before you can watch and listen. And so, well, okay, I know the story of the Austrian theory of the business cycle, so I can watch and listen and enjoy it, even if it's rap. Okay, I like it. Uh, now, if you look at the uh, other half, it's college people who don't know the story, but they already like rap video. Well, hey, it's a win-win situation. Okay, they, they, they got it made. They can enjoy it, uh, listen to the uh, words, and get the story. Now, I have to say, I particularly like the treatment of the bust as the hangover that uh, follows the excessive drinking. Uh, I have to say, my favorite part of the video is that toilet bowl scene. <laughs> I've always, my wife says I've always been a sucker for bathroom humor anyhow, but uh, uh, it's a great scene. Uh, and, and yet there's a, there's a, a deeper meaning uh, to it that I'm sure uh, that John and Russ are both aware of, and that is uh, Paul Krugman it, it has become infinite, infamous for disparaging the Austrian theory by calling it the hangover theory. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, Popola and Roberts have boldly and correctly embrace the analogy, and, and thereby turn Krugman's ill-tempered critique into a very effective pedagogy. So I applaud them for that. I think that's a great part. Uh, from my vantage point as the teacher of macroeconomics in an auditorium, I have uh, 240 sophomores uh, that I teach macroeconomics to. I can attest to the early success, as I'm sure most of you can, and Jeff already has, so I'll make mine short. I was uh, certainly pleased to get an email from John Popola uh, not long after the video came out, but it turns out I, like so many others of you, I'm sure, had already gotten several emails and continued to get more and more, and they continue coming uh, even today from colleagues and former students uh, sending me links to the video. Uh, and soon enough, I started receiving emails from my own students in the current semester. And I'm still talking about Keynes in that, in that course. Uh, and so I've mentioned Hayek a few times, but that comes later. Uh, but my own students are sending me links to this uh, video. I've never had anything like that. They don't send me links to anything. They don't send me links. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but there it is. And uh, some of them have begun to ask in class, am I going to show this in class? You know, why don't I show this in class? And, and the answer is simple. We haven't got to that part yet. You know, we have to wait till we, we get to that part, and then I'll show it and link it to my uh, PowerPoints and to my uh, website. But I have to say that, that the most refreshing reaction came from a couple of textbook salespeople. You all know them if you're, if you're a professor at a university, who uh, paid me a routine office visit uh, to explain what macro techs they had. Two young ladies uh, showed up in my office. Now, I have to say, they sounded less than enthusiastic when they started explaining uh, what they had. They said, well, we've got one book that presents several schools of thought, all in terms of the aggregate supply, aggregate demand model. And I said, well, that's fine, but uh, I just don't think in terms of aggregate supply and aggregate demand. They said, well, we have another book that starts with solo growth model and then deals with short-run variation in output and employment. So that's fine, but I, I don't teach the solo growth model. Okay, they said we have a book that presents real business cycle theory and then follows up with considerations of menu costs as, as identified by the new Keynesians. But fine again, but I don't teach any of that stuff. And they said, well, what do you teach? <laughs> and so I said, well, I present Keynesian theory to explain what policies the government are likely to adopt next. And then I present Hayekian theory to show how perverse it all is. And, when I said that, both their eyes lit up and had this big smile. And one of them says, have you seen that rap video? <laughs> but 
they couldn't have it. They didn't have a book to offer, you know. And just <laughs> so I uh, that was a great experience. Now, if you look at the pedagogy, and I'll make this short. I know we're uh, running short of time, but uh, the debate used to be centered on rules versus discretion. Some of you are old enough to remember those days. That was Friedman and Heller, Friedman, the monetarist and Keynesians. We abide by rules. We have discretionary changes in macro uh, policy tools and so on. And later it evolved into uh, all about expectations. Uh, are expectations static? Are they adaptive? Are they rational in some sense or other? So we've gone through all of that. Uh, and even today, a lot of that stuff is relevant. Certainly, uh, Friedman's uh, quantity theory of money is relevant. MV equals PQ still. Uh, but as time goes by, as semester follows semester, I find that I teach less of that. In fact, I, I use it mainly as a little interlude, a little interlude between the Keynesian theory and the Hayekian theory. Uh, and uh, this, the... the, the uh, contrast there is the same one that's in the video. It's, it's really a contrast between markets don't work, Keynes, and markets do work, Hayek. Uh, and that's the pedagogy that, uh, that at least my course uh, has evolved to, and I think it's happened elsewhere. That's perfectly captured in the video. So I applaud uh, the makers for that. Thank you. Well, well, that's really cool. So thank you, Roger. So I guess uh, I know we're five minutes over, but uh, I want to take questions. So does anyone else have any questions? <laughs> Mike Munger. So uh, Mike and Russ are good friends. And Mike's pretty Austrian. So he just was into it. He's a, and he's a really nice guy. And he came up in that snow, no less. So I, you know, we, I wasn't sure what role he was going to have. Originally, there was, oh, he was the, the limo driver. Originally, there was going to be a scene, and this is just the way this process works, where they arrive, and there's the moment. And actually, we even contemplated that Hayek wouldn't take the limo. He'd take the subway. You might have noticed that when he... Uh, he had a little New York City Metro card in his hand. Um, you know, people say that's more, people I think maybe sometimes unfairly criticize it as being moralizing. I think it's just called being smart. Um, but uh, there was going to be a scene where they arrived and everyone loves canes and there's the press and all the, the bulbs are flashing and kayaks already getting left behind there. And, that, and the bouncer was going to be Mike Munger, but time and snow killed that scene. <laughs> So uh, Mike Munger became the limo driver. It's econstories.tv. Well, I, I'll say that it looks a lot more expensive than it was partly because I was leveraging my, my friends for favors and doing a lot of the work that I would normally. I mean, I was actually having to learn things that I'm glad I had to relearn because, you know, you, you, I don't, there is specialization. You don't do everything anymore. So, uh, I mean, I was driving around, picking up equipment myself, dropping it off the next day in, in uh, Harlem. And um, to make this the right way, would probably cost close to $100,000. That's not what it costs. But that's about what it should cost. If you were going to pay people market wages and they didn't know you or care about your dreams and aspirations. So, <laughs> that, oh yeah, that's, that's pretty much, yeah. It cost a fraction of that, but that's what it should have. <laughs> Uh, New York City casting agents have a lot of resources. So, <laughs> there hasn't been monetization yet. Um, I think, you know, my vision for this is I'd like to destroy the circular flow and banish it from thought. 
It's an awful, awful place to start. It, I, I'm glad, I, again, I'm glad I didn't learn it because had I, it probably would have trapped my mind in a fallacy. So uh, if there's a business model out of this, because it needs to be free, everything we do needs to be free for the sake of the main goal, which is advancing Hayek. A million views wouldn't have happened if we were charging. So, but you make really compelling content that happens to have some Austrian stuff in it. And I think a lot of teachers, and we've seen that with this, even if they're not Austrians, they can't help but use it because it's like, it wakes their students up. So I wanna make, I wanna basically lure all of the educators in this planet to, to use Austrian laced content to teach their classes. It's going to be a, it's a stated goal, but it's still going to be a drug. <laughs> Really? Well, this is a completely original track. So, and uh, we actually negotiated sort of a, because even music is a weird, music still, even when you can, even when it's original, unless you're going to, unless you're going to pay enough to buy all the rights, the rights outright, um, it's, it's a unusual thing. So, you know, we worked out an arrangement with the composer to, share whatever profit may come and et cetera. But uh, it is our track. It, it, it's, I don't think it sounds quite like anything. I'm sure it sounds like something. There's only so many chords, but you know, you can't quite patent them yet. You almost can. So uh, anything else? All right, well, thank you so much.